those who may want to assist. If you are interested, please see our website or contact us at 614-444-0701. Have a blessed week. friends we're just so excited this is another wonderful time where we come to praise God for all that has been done I want you to know my name is Leon Rogers senior the senior pastor of the Mount Carmel Community Baptist Church we're just excited that you're here with us today on our online our conference call worship and we're just so thankful amen our call to worship out of Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul make her bold. that are listening on our 101.3 FM dial that are here for our park prayer and praise. In the lot, we will deliver to you communion kits so that we will be able to take our communion together. But for those of you that are at home, I would ask that you would join us. If you believe God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just get a small amount of bread. Somebody said, but I don't have living bread, but that's all right. Just get what you have. God says, I'll bless you anyway. Because if you know, Jesus just went and got what was available at the time when he was in the upper room with his disciples. I want you to know that God will bless you right where you are. If you got wheat, if you got great products that's uh, not available, again, just whatever you have. And please join us 
Jesus used again what was available. I want to share with you that we are being mindful regarding the reopening of our church. I want you to know that we believe that it's vitally important that we reopen Mount Carmel in a manner. The campus needs to be a safe place so that you feel confident about all that will be done. Father, we want you to know, all of you, that the Father has given us the proper perspective. Under the leadership and the guidance of Deaconess uh, Elaine Sweeney, we have pulled together a reopening the church task force and they've done just a wonderful job. We're about 90, 95% there. We've done all of our bio cleaning, our floors are spick and span, fresh and new. We've got all kinds of supplies. We're just ready. God has blessed us and God is so good and we're just thankful. Now, we have a four phase of reopening process. We're in phase one, which is the more intensive piece. And we're thankful for uh, God helping us. Today, right now, we're in the strictness of our phases, phase one. No more than 10 people at a time. And the point here is that we're saying all of our vulnerable populations, please stay home. Uh, this past week, our state bishop of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship and the person of Bishop uh, Dwayne C. Tisdale shared with us to just be careful and also in support of our conservative view in how we open the church. And he sent us uh, to all of the pastors throughout the state that we are to be cautious in how we reopen. So we're thankful that God is blessing us in that way. Now phase two is when we do open the doors, but it's gonna be in a limited process. We'll allow for maybe upwards uh, to 25 people to allow to come in and we'll spread you out. We'll get you in the appropriate places so that you might experience. We'll still have Facebook Live, we'll still be on conference call, uh, but we want you to know that we're getting there. Now, right now, we're planning, and it's very tentative, on July uh, the 19th, which is on the third Sunday of July. However, if the elements continue to go like they are, where there's more and more individuals that are coming uh, together and somehow COVID seems to be hitting us. And I want you to know, we're gonna be mindful of that. We're gonna be following the guidelines as uh, we have seen uh, regarding those things that have been given by the Columbus Health Department. We will follow those guidelines. We're not gonna step outside of it. We want you to know that in our church family and surrounding church family members that we've had upwards to about six to seven people that have contracted the disease. Several of them actually are coming out of their isolation and the Columbus uh, Health Department has given them the okie dokie. Amen. And we praise God for all of them. But I have a list of individuals, not so much that they have the COVID, but they, they, they've been sick. And we just want to do a shout out today to Brother Glenn Rogers, to Sister Karen, to Mother Dolores White, to Brother D'Angelo Miles, to Sister Akira Jacobs, to Brother Ulysses Murphy, and to Sister Bobby Peters. We want to say that our love, our thoughts, our prayers are with you. So we are just uh, in this phase of opening again. We are doing shout out so that you be mindful of all that is going on. We're thankful for what God has done. Amen. And I want you to know that when we come back in the church, it will be different. It's not going to be like we've done on the pre-COVID environment. We're not going to do all the hugging, even though I want to hug y'all so badly. I want to give you the holy kisses and all of that. But we're going to be mindful that we're in a new day. And so there's going to be a new norm. We're going to have a lot of signs around the building. We're going to have various ways of doing things. We're going to have greeters, hospitality members that are going to seat us 
And I need us not to be angry about it, but to be prepared. I want you to get prayed up. We're in a season of rest. We're in a season of sharpening our tools. And I want us to be mindful. I want us to be ready. I want to also do a shout out to my adjutant, Elder Virgil Starks. God bless you, my brother. Love you so much. I know that that surgery went well. God already showed it. I had a chance to look from outside into your bedroom from the outside window. Amen. And I just praise God for you that you're on the mend. God bless you. Uh, Minister Dorothy, take care of him. All right. I know he might want an extra can of water or some soda. Just help him out through this time. Amen. We'll work out the other details later. Amen. God bless you as you continue to heal. In our moment in the giving, we're at the point where giving is a part of our worship. It's a way of returning to God what is already His. God owns everything, and we just need to trust God in what we give. He allows us to, to pull donations in. Mount Carmel's in a special situation where we're in collaboration with our community partners and we are doing various things, helping the sick and the shut-ins everywhere. And we're so thankful. Uh, our deaconesses on past this past week and some of the ministers went around the community giving flowers that we had available. Amen. They were donated uh, by one of the major uh, garden supplies. And we're thankful that we're able to reach out. So I want you to know that the donations here at Mount Carmel Community Baptist Church are used in a wise way to support all of the ministries of the church and to pay for the expenses and support of what we've done. I believe that in faith that God will ultimately provide uh, out of saith the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven, pour out so much blessing that you won't have room enough in your barns to hold it. I ask that you might put that special attention in giving today. Now there are three ways to support our ministries here. First is sending uh, via mailbox, Mount Carmel Community Baptist Church, P.O. Box 7684, Columbus, Ohio, 43207. Again, P.O. Box 7684. And our zip code, 43207. So that's the first way of giving. We have two electronic forms. One is Givefy, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y at dot com. Look, search Mount Carmel Community Baptist Church, and then download the app, tap it, put your amount that you want to give, and then send it. That's all there is. Now, give the five does charge a 2.9% plus 30 cent surcharge. That's their charge. Second way of electronic giving is through Cash App. The dollar sign, M-T-C-A-R-M-E-L. And uh, submit how much you want to give. There's no charge to that. Amen. Let us bow in just a word. Gracious Lord, we acknowledge your ownership over all the earth. And we who live within it, with the Spirit's help, we confess our love and our loyalty to you, Lord. And with the Spirit's help, dedicate these offerings, these tithes that are coming into your storehouse. Father, allow for it to be used for the uplift and the building of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Father, who gave his life for us. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Hey, may heaven continue to smile upon you. Amen. Today, uh, we're going to take a text. I, I, I want y'all to know we had to cancel teaching on yesterday because my wife reminded me that yesterday was the 4th of July and I had shared on last Saturday to our 
uh, uh, students that I wanted to teach because we're in the midst of teaching on recognizing God's voice. And I found that some of us, when we hear God's voice, we don't respond to God's voice. So we've been teaching for about a little over a month now. And right now, we have been teaching on uh, the law of legacy and the law of influence. And now, oh, hallelujah, we're in a season of looking at peace, hallelujah, and how to sharpen our tools. So I really want to implore you today uh, that the announcements that were given earlier, observations that we're going to be teaching on this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Amen. But I missed it from yesterday. So today I'm going to be looking at somewhat of a focused teaching. Amen. Because I really believe that God is talking to us. So I want you to turn your, those Bible readers out there. Amen. If you're a Bible reader, just text in the line. I'm a Bible reader. And somebody say, give encouragement. Hallelujah. And somebody just say, thank you, Lord. I need you to text that right now. If you can't text it, just type it in to the Facebook uh, uh, crew. Amen. We're just thankful for what God is doing. Out of Acts, the 10th chapter, I want to take some elements of scripture here because there is something mighty that's going on in our country. And it's important for us to understand that God has taken back his control. to do or whatever else you may think ain't got nothing to do with it it's all about sin and we need to understand God is taking control of what's going on in this country and I want to share with you out of the scripture to support that we've been teaching on it over several weeks and I really want you to realize that we're crossing the racial divide. Now, I know we all focus on the COVID-19 and talking about cancer and all of the different treatment. And, and the Bible even tells us, be careful of the times when all of these things are happening because there are going to be false prophets, oh, y'all not listening, that are going to share things that are going to mislead people and going to kill them not in their physical death, but in their eternal damnation. We need to understand God is sending us a message. Hallelujah. Mm. So out of Acts 10 chapter, I'm going to start with verse 1 through 3, and then I'm going to skip down to 34. Listen to what he says. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all of his family were devout and God-fearing, and he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Verse 3, only one day at about 3 in the afternoon, uh, Cornelius had a vision. Watch this. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Tell him, I want to read verse 4. He said, Cornelius stared at the angel in fear. What is it, Lord? <laughs> is what Cornelius said. And the angel answered, Your prayers and your gifts to the poor, I hope somebody's listening, have come up as a memorial offering to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Watch this, verse five. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon who is called Peter. Uh, I wish I could read on, but y'all read the rest of that. Amen. Go to verse 34. I want to share uh, some thoughts here. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. 
Uh, let, let, me, let me talk. Stop right there. There are some folk in the church right now that think just because they are uh, somehow a holy roller that God don't talk to other folk. Uh, yeah, you need to understand that it may not be Cornelius. It could be Leon. It could be Allison. It could be Virgil. It could be Sharon. Whatever the name is, God is saying, I take no respect of person. Oh, I wish I had a witness. You need to understand, God loves everybody. Now, let me share hmm, just a little further here. Now, huh, as he was reading this, verse 35, but except from every nation, the one who fears him and does what is right. Verse 36, who knows the message God sent to the prophet of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. And yeah, verse 37, who know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went about doing good, healing all who are under the power of the devil. Because God was with him. Hmm. Verse 39. We are witnesses. Somebody say we. Yeah, type in there. We, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Hmm. That, that's parenthetically that God is saying, I'm not just helping those in the synagogues and in the temple and in the church, but I'm helping everybody. That's what God is saying. Look at what he says on. They killed him by hanging him on the cross. But, somebody say but. Huh? But God raised him from the dead on the third day. Caused him to be seen. And he was seen by all the people. But by witnesses whom God had already chosen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me repeat that. He was not seen by all the people, but by those who were selected as the witnesses. Ah, Elder Dean, we're selected as witnesses for God's goodness. Watch, I may not be in the church right now, but God has selected me a long time ago before day started. And he helped me to be a witness to his cause. Because one day, I'm going to wake up and see the new thing. Oh, somebody missed last week's sermon. I talked about the new things God has for us. Ah, uh, yeah, my gosh. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse 40. Huh, let me report uh, the, the B part of 41. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Verse 42. He commanded us to preach to the people to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. My last verse. My last verse. And all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. Hallelujah. Today, just for a thought, I want to share. God can change me too. T-O-O. -O. God can change me too. Yeah, I believe that we're at the precipice of crossing the racial divide. Some weeks ago, I shared with you that over 400 years, black folk have been in a prison huh, of racism. And I want you to know that God huh, is calling on us right now to see who he is. Yeah. Talking about change. God can change me 
to. I was going back and I became literal, Sister Jessica, and I saw that God had uh, helped me to understand change. Yes. Thomas Wolfe, the great hot writer, some years ago wrote a book called You Could Not Go Back Home. Hmm. And in some ways, I believe that Thomas Wolfe was correct. You can't stay where your heart has been always if you cannot accept change. So I'm parenthetically changing a little bit of what he says. And life is forever changing. And we are a part of the change. Now watch this. Perhaps we can do what Dr. Uh, Carlisle Marley said. He's a, a Baptist preacher that died several years ago. But he offered a book called The Christian Lifestyle. And he suggested we can go back through home and accept all the stuff of our past, bad and good. Now watch. Which God has at his disposal for shaping our lives. Ha, ah, somebody missed it. See, because of what I've gone through, God has shaped and molded me because when I went through the agony and the pain of life, God ha, now knows how to capture my attention because I've been through something and I don't know about you, but I remember my mama as a child, we would go down in the south and there was a black pot kettle in the middle of the floor and it would be stroke up and it would be hot. And my mama knew how curious I was. And she said, boy, don't you touch that black stove. Well, just like any child, you get curious and try to figure out why mama said, don't touch the stove. Now mama said, because it's hot, but I didn't care. So one moment, when my mama and my grandmama had their backs turned, I walked up to the stove, touched it, and I yelled out with a loud scream. And she looked at me and said, I told you, don't touch uh, the black stove, huh? but that's where some of us are. Huh? We don't realize huh, that God has for you to realize, huh, to go back huh, in your memory box, huh, to remember there were things huh, you should not have done. Hallelujah. Huh? So I'm here to share with you huh, that God does not erase your past, huh, but he enhances your past, huh? and it gives us time huh? and grace huh? to receive the stuff huh? that of our past huh? so that we can be thankful huh? for what God has done for you. Huh? I know there was a day huh? I had no dimes in my pocket, huh? but I can tell you was a day in my life huh, the bill collectors called my house but I'm thankful huh, that God let me see my past huh, and change me so huh, that now the only thing huh, they want to do huh, is give me more credit oh I wish I had a witness you need to know huh, that God can change you too hallelujah watch this huh. God gives us time and grace uh, to receive the stuff of our past. Uh -huh. And we ought to be thankful for what he's done. And so God gives us courage to tiptoe on your faith uh -huh. so that you can anticipate what God has around the corner. Yeah. How we walk by faith yeah. and not by sight. I don't know what's around the corner, but I tiptoe on my faith that God will get me through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, somebody's probably saying, 
Pastor, you're too excited. You need to share the text today. Well, let me get in the text. <laughs> in the early days of Christendom, the days were marked by excitement of God's spirit moving through the people and people were being changed uh, as a result. Converts were pouring uh, and they were uh, coming from surprise backgrounds. Uh, let me share and run down uh, some of the folk. Uh, there were ex-pimps uh, and prostitutes, uh, liars, uh, gamblers, uh, extortionists, uh, tax collectors, bankers, robbers, thieves, womanizers, Greeks, sinners from all walks of life that were coming into the church. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God huh, can do life-changing excitement to bring folk into the church. And even the Trinity Paul, huh, he used to go around and slay Christians, huh, held the clothes of Stephen as he was being stoned huh, as a wonderful worker of the Lord. But even he, Paul, whose name was Saul, huh, became a Christian, huh, and non-Jews were responding to the good news of Jesus Christ. Huh. That's called the Elon Gullion. Huh. And many of us huh, don't realize huh, that the Elon Gullion huh, was the good news huh, of coming from war. Huh. That meant a messenger huh, came and told the chief huh, that everything huh, on the war path huh, was going good. Huh. I'm here to tell you, somebody, huh, I don't know who it is, huh, but somebody's been changed huh, because of the good news of Jesus. Huh. Thank you, Lord, huh, for blessing me. Huh. Thank you for the salvation huh, of good life huh, in my life. Huh. Changed huh, my soul one day. Huh. Thank you, Lord, huh, for blessing me. Mm. Now, in the lesson, huh, Peter had grown to a stronger religious atmosphere, and all his life he had obeyed the legalities huh, of being a Jew. Huh, and he was a good Jew. Huh, and you need to understand, huh, he followed the rules rigorously. Huh, but, huh, somebody say, but. Huh, but we huh, need to understand huh, that yet the laws and the customs of the people, he got so ingrained, huh, he was never willing huh, to receive the Jews, the people outside of the Jewish faith. But they said in his dietary laws, huh, he had drilled into him from his early days, huh, who knows how many times he had heard from his parents uh, playing with an unclean creature or entering the house uh, of an unclean Jewish person, a uh, non-Jew. In other words, uh, if somebody hadn't been saved, you could not go in the house. Uh, but uh, they said, Peter, uh, take a moment uh, and had a dream. Uh, and his dream, huh? Yes. You need to learn huh, how to lean on me, huh? Thank you, Lord. Huh. Well, let me get to my points and I'll be done. Huh. First point, huh. God can change anybody. Hallelujah. Peter was about huh, to have an epiphany, huh, an unexpected revelation huh, for him huh, that changed huh, his way. Huh. Now watch, huh. Cornelius was the sinner, but Cornelius was willing to do good things. Huh? He helped the poor. He helped the sick. He helped those around him. And Peter, because of his religious belief, uh-oh, 
I'm messing with somebody's religion. You've got to be careful of what man says versus what God says. Ah, thank you, Spirit. Today, we're in an environment where we're finding folk hiding behind Scripture. There was an individual not long ago went through the crowd who was protesting in a good way a bunch of Corneliuses and Corneliuses at, meaning women and men, protesting in a good way. But he sent out his soldiers, his army, scattered them with all kind of spray and things. Then he stood in front of a church with a Bible in his hand. Didn't read a scripture. And I remember one of the reporters said to him, I don't know who him is, but y'all know him. And he said, is that your Bible? He said, it's a Bible. Sounding like a snake in the grass. I need you to understand that it's not flesh and blood we wrestle against, but it's against the principalities, powers in high places that change the God of heaven. And we need to understand God can change you too. Yes, he can. And we need to understand that God is telling us while Peter was on a flat top, he fell asleep because he had gotten tired. And the Lord told him that in the midst of his trance, told him that every rejected beast and creepy crawly thing is clean. Watch this acceptable as food. His point was, just because somebody don't go to church like you, they still are God's people. And we need to reach to them. We need to help them. And hallelujah, I thank God today. Senseless killing that's going on in this country because we don't want to change. We got to stop the insidious ways that we had because of what mama said and daddy said. But what did God say? Too many of us are being straight. Let me give you point number two. God will feel what's missing. God will give you what you need. God will give you your cup a petition so that you will see the goodness of the Lord. Cornelius, to whom home Peter, he had summoned or invited him in. And you need to understand, Cornelius, he was in charge of a hundred men or so. He feared God, highly respected by his troops and the civil civilians in the area. Although he had, he might be called what is called a good life, he felt incomplete. He said, something was missing in my life. Huh? And I heard him say, go. Huh? And an angel came to him huh? and told him huh? that we're going to cross huh? the Jew and Gentile racial divide. We're going to have the scene for the first time. people that all uh, 
Uh, Cornelius said, uh, I heard uh, he had some character. Uh, first I saw uh, he sought the Lord. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, second he did, uh, he revered God. Uh, he trusted God. Uh, he loved God. Uh, but he didn't. They cut son. That's all right. Uh, you just talk to them uh, and lead them to God. Uh. Can I get away at that? Son? What did Peter say? Uh, that changed Cornelius. Uh, well. Uh, Asian people too. 
I love non-black people too. But you know, one of the things about racism that I found out, you gotta first be anti-racist in order for God to relieve you of your racism. Somebody missed it. I gotta be against it. That means in my quiet corners, when people are talking about this, that, and the other, I need to stand up and just change my part of the world. You ain't gotta change it all. I don't represent the black race, but I'm a part of it. But guess what? I'm a part of the white race too. I'm a part of God's kingdom. People are saying black lives matter because people have been killing blacks forever. They're not trying to isolate themselves. Too many people, and there are false prophets all over the place. The demons, the imps of Satan are trying to change God's purpose. Let me share this with you. I want you to know that God is telling us you can change too. See, we want to extend the invitation to Christ. Salvation is the condition of being forgiven of one's sins. It's not the end of life. It's just the beginning. And I want you to know that God can change right where you are. If you have a mindset, you want to be homosexual, you want to be lesbian, but watch this. But I can be heterosexual and still be a sinner. I want y'all to hear this. Too many of us going off on the wrong things. We're all in this together. God is here to change you too. I've had to learn. I used to be one of them, talk about this person, that person, that thing, that thing. But God had to change me, put me in his trance so that I could see the real invitation into my heart. That's where the change occurs. In my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. God tells us we gotta do that. Now watch this. If you are one of those that's looking for a church home, I ask you to consider Mount Carmel. You say, well, but I don't live in Columbus. That's all right. You can still be a part of us. You can help us. You're a part of our ministry now. Support us. Help us. Let us be a part of your life. Let us counsel with you. We have licensed counselors here at this church. People that are trained to help you to get through various situations. And the things we don't know, we ain't going to make it up. We'll send you to the right people. I'm the overseer in the District of Columbus, and I have access to others who have the gifts to help you through. Now, I want you to do this for me. Say, Lord, I'm a Jesus' name. Amen. That's his first step. And we want you to know out on our website, hover over the place that says connect. Mount Carmel Community Baptist Church. Say on the side, connect. There's two options. Prayer requests. Let us know what your requests are. Let us pray for it. Send it in. Send it in. We'll pray for you. Second thing, accepting Christ. There's a lot of verbiage that'll give you steps to get there. But go down to the bottom of that page on the website and you'll see the invitation. Write your name in. We'll contact you. We want you to be a part of this. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power in your name. Thank you that you hold the keys of death and hell. Jesus, you were raised from the grave paving the way for all of us to a new life. Father, I know you can change me, but I gotta be willing to 
step in. We confess our need for you, Lord. We ask that you renew our hearts, our minds, our souls for the days that lie ahead. Refresh us, Lord. Keep your word true. Plant it within us, Lord. Father, keep us focused on what's pure and right. We thank you for the power to be obedient to your word. Father, now I ask you. Bless those that are overcoming racism. Help us, Father, to know that we can be changed too. Father, shine your light through us and over us. May we make a difference in this world for your glory and for your primable gift of Jesus Christ whom glory and honor is given. Father, we thank you for it's in the name of Jesus. at this time. God loves you. We kiss the spirit upon you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Amen. We're going to transition into our Lord's Supper. Those of you that believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we ask that you would remain with us so that we may enter into this service. The Lord's Supper is a time of uh, memorializing our Savior's death by which he atones our sins. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, they participate in this service. Church members usually participate with the Lord's Supper. There are two ordinances we do honor here at Mount Carmel. First one is called uh, the baptism, where we fully immerse you in the water. The water doesn't save you, the spirit does. But the water serves as a representation to the world that I've been changed. God can change me too. Amen. And then the second ordinance that we do honor is the Lord's Supper. Now we don't call it communion because communion really uh, gets the inference that the juice is the actual blood of Jesus and that the bread you eat is the actual uh, body of Jesus. We don't quite believe it in that same way. We believe in the, the supper as the symbolism. The cup represents the blood of Jesus and the bread represents the body of Christ. Now, we want to share with you that in drinking of the fruit of the vine, it acknowledges the blood that covers our lives. When God the Father sees us, he sees his son, the evidence. Now watch this. I need to share this with somebody. Thank you, Spirit. We need to understand that there are times, there are times when we fail to realize I'm not perfect, but God is. And because of the blood that's smeared on my life, that God sees me. That's why the children of Israel had to paint the blood on the doorposts because the death angel passed over them. That's what happens to us. The death angel passes over, but God sees Jesus in us. And we're thankful for what God is doing. Out of John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father except by me, meaning Jesus. For we all have sinned. We all come short of the glory of God. That's the Bible. It tells us that uh, all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that come by Jesus Christ. Proverbs 28 and 13 says, 
Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the ones who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. And I want you to know, we're not perfect. We need to believe that Jesus Christ died for us. He was buried, he rose from the dead, and he's coming back for his church. God wants us to be willing to turn from sin, repent of our sins. Now here we have a custom that we repeat three times. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm going to ask us today, just repeat it outwardly where you are. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Say it a second time. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come on. Third time. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Hallelujah. Let us bow. Lord, we pray the cup of thanksgiving for the blood of Jesus was shed on the hill of Calvary for the remission of sins. Dear God, we also pray for the bread of life as a symbol of Christ's body given for us. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son for his humility, for his willingness to show us the way. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to share in his suffering that we might also share his glory. We also thank you for the cup that represents Christ's blood that was shed on the hill at Calvary for the remission of our sins. Thank God for the sacrifice of your son that died for us, washing us clean, reconciling us to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, for those of you that have your bread or your wine or juice or even water, whatever you have, we're going to take this as the moment where we have our communion. I'm preparing mine now. I have the bread and I also have the cup. Out of Matthew's Gospel, 26th chapter. Beginning in verse 26, it says, As Jesus was eating, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Let us all eat together. Wherever you are, let us eat together. Amen. And then Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said to them, Drink ye all of it. Let us all drink together. Amen. For this is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I I know it was the blood. Amen. Let's just sing a verse. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Yes, one day when I saw he died upon the cross. Sixth chapter 23rd, it says, The Lord bless you, keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah for the Lamb. God bless you. Stay safe. Remain healthy. See you next week. By the grace of God. Love you. Take care.